The Scotch bonnet variety of hot pepper is sought after for the unique spicy flavor it brings to many dishes. Not many of us in the Caribbean would be without a Scotch bonnet pepper plant that bears fruit year round. If we do not have sufficient space, the Scotch bonnet plant is likely to be growing in a pot. But if you're not careful, growing Scotch bonnet pepper may present some disappointments, such as from pests and diseases. In this video, we will share with you information on how you can grow scotch bonnet from planting all the way through harvest. There's lots to do, so let's get going. Welcome to the Calix Services channel. I'm Thelma. The topic of this video, Scotch Bonnet. It is one of those hot peppers, very popular throughout the world, but it is primarily grown in tropical regions. Here in the Caribbean, it is very, very popular and it's used fresh or pickled. It adds flavor and zest to our rice and peas, our jerk meats, our stews, fish and soups. But be careful when using scotch bonnet pepper as it, uh, it packs quite a punch. Its heat unit measures between 100,000 to 350,000 heat units. When you compare this to the jalapeno pepper that has 3,500 to 8,000 heat units, you know you have to be careful. We're covering scotch bonnet in this video. We're going to start with the growing requirements, take you through planting, fertilizing, watering, pests and diseases, and harvesting. Let's begin with their growing requirements. Now, in terms of what Scotch Bonnet likes, you will get best results when you grow it in full sunlight, in fertile, medium textured soils with good drainage and a fairly neutral pH, pH between 6 to 7.5. Prepare the soil about two weeks before planting but a medium textured soil will require very little preparation in terms of plowing or digging. But make sure you incorporate a generous amount of organic matter, whether it is decomposed manure or compost. Scotch bonnets are grown from seedlings, which hopefully you can obtain at your garden center. If not, you'll have to grow your own. If you're not sure how to do this, then take a look at the Calyx video called Step-by-Step -step Seedling Production, which we did about a year ago. In terms of how long it takes to produce a seedling, it takes 8 to 10 days from sowing to germination and another 6 to 7 weeks before the seedlings are ready to be transplanted. But quite often, I take the seedlings out of the seedling tray and transplant them into a, a 3-inch pot that gives the seedling time to grow and get, become better established and I end up starting with a, a bigger seedling. In terms of spacing, if you're growing your scotch bonnet in rows, position each plant approximately three or three and a half feet apart. Bear in mind that within a very short period of time, between two and three months, each seedling will grow to occupy at least two feet in all directions. If you're planting more than one row of plants, space your rows about five feet apart. That way, when each plant occupies about two feet, you will still have about one foot in between rows for you to be able to maneuver and attend to your plants. So it's now time to plant and you've already incorporated your manure two weeks prior. And at the time of planting, you can top up with a little bit of compost as I just did. You carefully place the root ball into the prepared hole, trying very hard not to dislodge the root ball and firm the soil around the seedling. Give the soil a good soak after planting, making sure the water permeates throughout the root ball and the surrounding root zone. Now maintain consistent soil moisture to the roots of the seedlings and young plants, especially during the establishment phase 
all the way through to flowering and fruiting. Let's turn our attention to that very important aspect of growing any crop, nutrition. Now, as you know, we recommend growing with organic matter, manures or compost whenever possible. And if you started out your seedlings with a generous amount of organic matter, you should be good to go for at least the first four weeks, after which we recommend that you uh, top up with organic matter and every three or four weeks you apply um, compost tea. Here's a general fertilizer recommendation if you are using conventional inorganic fertilizers. Two weeks after transplanting, you may apply a NPK fertilizer with a ratio of one to two to two. For example, the formulation 11, 22, 22 is quite popular. The second fertilizer application would be about six weeks after transplanting, at which point you would switch to a fertilizer that is high in potassium. This is sometimes re referred to as bloom boosters, and a typical formulation would be 7% nitrogen, 12% phosphorus, and 40% potassium. Uh, repeat this application at about 10 weeks when the plant should then be fruiting. During the fru fruiting period, you can then switch back to the 1 to 2 to 2 NPK ratio and apply that every five weeks or so. Of course, these are general recommendations which would vary depending on your particular situation. For example, if your plants are producing an abundance of leaves when they should be fruiting, I would say cut back on the fertilizer. Or if they're growing slowly with uh, leaves that are small and pale, you should increase the fertilizer rate while making sure the plants are getting sufficient water. This brings us to pests and diseases. Like all plants in your garden, scotch bonnet can be affected by several pests. Large holes in leaves or on the fruits would suggest that you have chewing insects such as slugs, snails, and cutworms. Scotch bonnet is also affected by those tiny sucking insects such as white flies, aphids, and mites. You can reduce the population of these pests by alternating applications of safe organic products such as Bt and Bioneem. Follow the recommendations on the product labels. Scotch bonnet pepper is also affected by various blights, leaf spots, and viruses. You should be able to obtain acceptable control with organic fungicides where available. The organic fungicide Serenade gives moderate control of leaf spots and stem rots. But let me emphasize that the best way to minimize the presence of pests and diseases in your garden is by non-chemical methods, such as making sure you don't overcrowd your plants, keep the foliage dry, especially throughout the night, prune dead and diseased leaves, and make sure you dispose of them outside of the plot and not in your compost heap either. This brings me to the best part of any crop, harvesting. Now, if you have looked after your scotch bonnet well, they should be bearing mature fruits about 12 weeks after transplanting. Harvest the fruits when they are fully developed, firm, and depending on your needs, you will reap them either full green or allow them to ripe on the tree. When you're picking, keep the stem attached to the fruit as this extends the shelf life of the fruit. This brings us to the end of yet another Calyx video showing you how to produce vegetables, uh, spices and other items in your home garden. While we focus on producing crops in small spaces, the information we provide can be scaled up quite easily. And if you need any guidance, we recommend that you check our book on crop production and harvesting, which is available on the BookFusion platform, as well as on Amazon Kindle. Just follow the links that we provide below the description to this video. If you like the information we provided on Scotch Bonnet, please give us a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and if you have not subscribed already, now would be a good time to do so. And don't forget to press the notification bell because that way you will not miss any of the videos that we upload weekly. Until the next video, I am Thelma, 
in the food section of the Calyx Garden saying thanks for watching, take care and bye bye.